Hey everybody, welcome uh, to Get Organized Challenge number seven, inks, chalks, pens, all those beautiful coloring agents that you've been um, accumulating over the years of your crafting hobby. We're going to talk about getting all of those things organized today. So do we actually have a minute? We actually have about a minute for me to just chat and say good morning to everyone. I had a really stressful morning this morning. I'm not sure... I'm not sure why that is, um, but I'm feeling much calmer now that I'm here with you all. So uh, for those of you who are new, if this is your first challenge, there's a little chat box going on on the side of your screen. So if you have a question, if you type the word question in all caps, Karen is monitoring uh, this class and will make a point to watch for those big questions so that she can get them answered. But there's a good chance somebody that's on board with us will help answer as well. Also, if you're new, um, getting organized is really kind of an overwhelming task, and so hopefully we're giving you the steps, step by step, for how to do it, how, how to get that all under control, but feel free to come back and join us for another Get Organized Challenge. There are many on board who've taken the challenge more than one time. Um, not only is it good for your organization skills, it's kind of fun, right? We have a good time here, so. All right, so let's get started with this week's winner. Also, if you're new, you want to submit a progress post either via email or on our Facebook page, the Get Organized Challenge Facebook page, because somebody wins a gift certificate every week. And this week, da na na, drum roll please, Alfie Kraus is our winner, and she posted her progress report. Acrylic cling stamps are cataloged, 96 crystal double sided CD cases. Great job. Still have a couple of dozen red rubber stamps to deal with. Some still need uh, to be mounted on foam. Woodblock mounted stamps on Monday. Hopefully the double-sided bags will arrive on Monday or Tuesday. Here's something I love about Alfie's post. At the bottom, she told us what her reward was. Mm, it sounds delicious. Uh, reward, banana split, fully loaded with the works. Ooh, Alfie, you are my kind of girl. That sounds amazing. What a great breakfast. Bananas, right? That's good for breakfast. So congratulations, Alfie. Let's get started then, right? Um, oh, little tip from Ginny H. So ginny has been on board with us for a couple of challenges. I don't even know if she's watching this or not, but I like to share helpful advice when I get it. And um, so what Ginny said was that she set up a station, a little area um, in her craft room with all the things that she needs to add things to her organization system, right? So she says, I set up a station uh, to enter new things easily, 12, a 12 by 12 box with scrap paper, a small ink pad, pens, glue, extra catalog, and scrap rack sheets to add when needed. Now it's easy to shop, bring it home, and immediately or soon afterwards integrate it right into my system. So really important, we talk in every lesson, I think I've said if it's easy, you'll do it, and if it's a pain in the neck, it's not gonna get done. So make it easy on yourself to stay organized. Follow Jenny's tip here. Set yourself up with all the little tools you need to integrate things into your four section system or add them to your catalogs as we're building. And then you're actually gonna do it. You're gonna be able to put it away. You're gonna have it cataloged. It's gonna be amazing. So thanks for sharing that, Jenny. So our goals at this, in this class are to help you get everything organized, accessible, visible, all those different coloring agents so that you know what you've got, you can get to it easily. And one of the biggest benefits from this whole thing is that you're gonna find out what things you have that are all dried up, they don't work anymore, um, or uh, they're unusable for that reason. One of the first things you have to decide is how are you gonna store those items? And this is really a challenge. I'll be honest with you, uh, we're working very hard on it here better um, organization for pens, better organization for stamps. You're gonna see some cool things come out at the beginning of next year that sort of address those issues. Because there are those challenges of the size and shape of things, right? How do you add new colors in? How do you, um, without having to totally rearrange everything, right? So baskets, cases, drawers, there's all of these options. Remember, um, the things that are easiest to get to, that are visible and accessible, are really gonna be the key. So I'm a supporter of putting your things into things that don't have lids or that you can reach right into or bring to your workstation comfortably and easily. We're gonna see some of those today. First um, challenge of the challenge is to gather all of your things together. And so, <laughs> 
I am also working on a thing called Go 10, which is get organized in 10 minutes a day. And after this class today, I'm going to film that class. So I've actually hauled all of my supplies out so that I can put everything in order from start to finish on video in the long, the long process that that is. I'm going to give you the tips, tricks, methods for doing it today. But if you're following on Go 10, we'll have a more detailed video even coming out next week. But it allowed me the opportunity, or afforded me the opportunity to actually show you all the different pieces sort of brought out, which is something I don't usually do in this challenge. So I brought everything together, and I've got all of my things, and it's kind of a mess here. I've got all my stuff. See if Sue, how good of a photographer is Sue. I've got all my stuff sort of grouped together by what it is. So Tim Holtz, paints, uh, Dauber inks, or Cat Eye inks, Adirondack, uh, Heidi Swap, different pens, glitters, ink pads, all of those goodies. That to work through. So one of the things I want in this first thing is to bring everything together, especially if you love a particular brand or um, designer, right? Because you're going to want to catalog in a couple of different ways for that brand or designer. All right. Um, I have to click my screen so I know what's going next. The next thing you're going to do is number everything, right? And numbering is going to come along with putting things into that catalog so that you know what, what things look like and where they're going to go. So once you number things, here's an example here that I've used. So these are two different boxes of um, chalks. This is brights, this is naturals. And um, you can see I just wrote a number on the lid of the box, right? So otherwise it'd be hard to label these. But now I've got them labeled on my thing according to whether they're natural or bright, so they're going to go into that catalog. So putting the number on is the first step. And then you're going to create catalog sheets for each color group. So this is orange, um, and you can see here I have naturals and brights, and I actually wrote the word out because it's an, because it's an example for this class, so it's a little bit easier. But, so, but normally what I would just do is write B12, and I would know that that was brights number 12. Now, one of the nice things about creating these catalogs is when you look at B12 on this, it's kind of a peachy color um, of orange, right? It has a lot of pink in it. Well, when you look at it in the case, it doesn't look that color at all. So one of the big benefits to doing to creating your catalog is that you're actually going to see what color that ink or that chalk or that pen is versus what it looks like um, in a you know, block of um, chalk or an ink pad or the cap of a pen, right? They're often different. So creating that color catalog is really going to help in that sense as you move through it. Now, when you're creating these catalogs, as I mentioned, you may want to create two catalogs at the same time. So this is a powder puff ink catalog sheet. So as I'm going along, I have my quick quotes, powder puff ink, catalog sheet and this is my orange sheet and I'm I've got the Mai Tai orange here and the Mai Tai orange here why is that why do you need to do that you only need to do that if you are a god a lot and you're really kind of trapped and you're really into a particular brand or uh, a particular type of product because you want to know what you've got if you're shopping for quick quotes inks this is what I already have right this is a good reference place now one of the amazing things about smartphones, and I'm actually going to do it when I do this, is that you can, cr you can take pictures of these catalogs and, and save it right to the uh, photo gallery on your smartphone in a file. And that way, if you're at a show or your favorite local scrapbook store, or even if you're just shopping online, you can look through that catalog on your phone and know, hey, I already have quick quotes, pink number 101, pink cheeks, right? because you can just take a picture of it. So I'm going to actually do that um, as I go through later and catalog everything so I can kind of test it out and work out, the, work out the bumps for it. But imagine you're at the scrapbook store or at the Creating Keepsakes event that's happening here in Seattle next month, and um, you think, oh, I need, that, I need that Copic marker. Well, if you don't have a list of all the Copic markers that you own, you're, there's a good chance you're going to buy something you've already got. So putting it all on your phone and making it uh, very visible is going to be really just a cool, cool way um, 
to know what I've got and what I don't have. So I'm really excited about that. All right, so uh, also the same thing for manufacturers. This is a Stickles. Um, this is a Stickles sheet. This is what you get when you print it off the internet. And I added black strips to this one. And the reason I added black strips to it was so that I could see what that Stickles ink was going to look like on something dark and or ink, glitter glue, what it was going to look like on something dark and on something light, right? That happens all the time that um, the color changes, which is really pretty obvious here. Some of them become opaque and that color shines through. Some of them are very thick, so the color's not going to come through. But if you add that black line through there when you print this or something similar. Now, um, going back to the Get Organized Challenge group, there are some of these things are already saved there on that. I think it's called documents now. It used to be called forms or files or something. But a lot of the gals who've already taken class have gone in and found charts like the Stickles chart for different ink companies or pen companies, Copic or Sukaneko, or, um, and they're already there, so you can just download it. Most of the major manufacturers have a color chart that you can download and print so you can check off the colors that you have. So there are some shortcuts there for keeping track of the brands of products that you already have, that you um, are already working with. Now, if you are, um, I should give credit here, the, the, the gal who first, uh, Lil Dexter, made a chart like this in Excel. And the nice thing about doing it in Excel was she could add a big fat black line and it just came out of her printer. I glued my black lines on here. Um, so she just made a grid in Excel and then she was able to draw those lines with, um, with stickles on her grid, got the same effect, but it printed out that black line for her. So um, she was the first one to bring that up as an option when we first started this class. So, um, all right. So, two, uh, there's the got a littles and there's a got a lots. And what are you going to do once you get your products all together? You're going to um, sort them two ways. Got a littles. You can sort by color, right? It makes it really simple. So, if I go over here, my little stash and store boxes, and this drawer, I pulled all these out so I could catalog them, but I'm going to put them back in here. If I'm a got a little, I can create my color catalog of products or not. Again, if you're got a little, you might not need that color catalog because you're going to be able to put all of your things. So I've got inks, pencils. Sorry, you probably can't see that, huh? I've got inks, pencils, glitter, glitter glues, all in this one drawer labeled red, right? So this is coming out of, sorry, I should probably show you that too. This is coming out of our stash and store boxes. So if you haven't seen the stash and store boxes, they're just a tall, narrow box that fits inside your cube storage, right? So when you put three of them in a cube, it fills the cube left to right, back to front, top to bottom. But if you're a got a little, you may be just grouping everything by color, and then it makes it really simple. When you need something red and you pull out that red drawer, everything you've got for red is right there and ready to go in that little in that one small space, right? So it makes it really easy. It's, it's hands on, it's uh, easy at hand to get to. It's easy to put things away if you're a got a little. If you're a got a lot, that's probably not gonna work for you because you have so many red things that it's gonna totally overwhelm that drawer and maybe many others. And so in that situation, well, before I move on, here's another kind of example about storing things by color. So this is just one of our stamp and supply suitcases. But again, everything's in there by color. This happens to be orange, right? But you've got everything together in one place. Now, the problem with things like um, inks and pens and that stuff um, is that you want to keep it stored flat. So with, with using something like the stamp suitcase like this, you, you're going to have to stack them up, which I'm never a big advocate of. Now, if you're not that worried about um, if you're not that worried about keeping things flat, then you can stand them on your edge and create your little color library of things also, right? So um, you can keep that in mind as well if you wanted to stand them up this way or stack them this way if you're using something like this. Before I had this as an example, I just used one of these little clamshells. This is left over from a Stampin' Up! 
stamp set right, but I was able to put all my orange things in here and then I could, again, stack that on a shelf with a label. I had to pull it out if I was keeping it flat, but it was easy to throw into my tote if I was going to go to a crop or a class or an event or something. So if you've got a little, that's an option. Also, for got a littles, there are, these are just a couple of samples, examples, I guess, not samples, of ideas that came from people on the website creating smaller examples of their colors. So if you're just a got a little, you can use just a small uh, four by six index card. And um, I believe it was Yar who, um, who used this idea first on the website, but she just, she was able to put six colors on a page on index cards. And if she ran out of space, she could double side it, but it made it e makes it easy. So if you're got a little and you're doing catalogs, you can do little catalog squares um, for that as well. And then we've also had people now who've used the flipping storage page, um, green, red, purple, same thing, created a card. If you're unfamiliar with the flipping storage page, I guess, that probably doesn't make any sense. But each one of the pockets kind of flips, so you can create that rainbow of a small color catalog there as well. I use a giant catalog, a 12 by 12 catalog for everything right here that we've been working through, right? So this has, this has stamps, punches, dies, all those examples of everything in here, wood block and acrylic. I've never added color to this catalog, but I'm going to do it now. I'm going to add that color section um, to the back of it, just like a regular four section system. So I have, um, and that's how the catalog is broken up. Now I'm gonna add that color this week when I go through and do this next, uh, when I process all of these goodies. So one of the things I wanted to talk to you about is our designers like Tim Holtz, for example. So if in fact you have a particular designer that you love their products, then you might want to start a catalog page not in your rainbow section but in the catalog section Woo. so in this catalog I do have some a section that's just called uh, I think I have Anna Griffin Heidi Swap and Tim Holtz let's find set let's find it in here designers designers Anna Griffin uh, Tim Holtz so what I've got in here now for Tim Holtz is just a um, a bunch of embossing folders but I also have a ton of coloring agents that are that brand so as I go through and catalog I'm gonna take all the different things that are Tim Holtz brand colors right all these different things and I'm gonna start a Tim Holtz page so I know if I'm uh, following some instruction on the internet or if I picked up a recipe card for a Tim Holtz project at somewhere like Hobby Lobby I know exactly what colors I already have so I can do that project and and where they're located so don't be afraid if you're a, especially if you're a god a lot to create a couple of pages of catalog for each thing it's going to make it so much easier when you go back later looking for those products um, if they're all included in in those catalog sheets so I've never recommended to do a um, color catalog by designer before but more and more we're seeing I mean even pens here uh, that are all the same designer brands that are coming out with those hard lines that that are um, that are going to work right so what do you need before you get started you're going to need some catalog sheets and like I said I use 12 by 12 here's another thing <laughs> kind of a goofball right this paper is printed on the back it's white on one side printed on the back right um, it's a, it was a paper pad which I've lectured uh, about before that I never used and so I was going to put it in my purge box and then I said hey that's just white paper on the back so now I'm using it to create catalog sheets for everything so I'm actually getting some use out of it so paper that you might have thought you were going to throw away uh, you might be able to use it for catalog paper because once I put it in a, a pocket I'm going to put it back to back and then you're not going to see it so just another use for for some of that um, those paper pads all right so you've got everything gathered together you're a god a lot what are you going to do next you're going to number each of your items before 
so that you can store them numerically because on your catalog, got a little brain dump there, I forgot what that was called. When you see this color, you need to be able to find it, right? So now we're going to go, we've got Adirondack ink here and uh, it's going to be number 13, right? So I would put a number on this 13 and it's going to go in my storage container. So this one's, this is kind of a funky little deal. Um, it is one through nine. This is the lid that goes on top of this box, right? I don't like lids on anything, right? If you can avoid the lid situation, that's one more step that you have to take, um, one less step that you have to take. If you travel with your glitter glues and, and you need to take the, you need to use the lid, then you can't double up. But, if, but by doing this, I got twice as much storage from this one container, right? So keep that in mind as you go along that there might be some tricks that you can use. Now, I don't use this anymore. It's very, it's, it's very limiting also. I'm going to use, for storing things, I'm going to use, again, one of our stash and store boxes. So here it is. It's, I emptied it all out so I could go through the number process. But you can see each of the drawers is numbered D1, D2, D3, and then it actually has a number next to it on these. Well, um, and that number is the number of bottle or the numbered bottles that are going to go in there. So this first drawer is going to hold 14 bottles, 1 through 14, 15 to 28, and 25, 29 to 42. I already know that because I've already put the bottles in here. Um, but before you label anything other than the drawer number, you want to know how many you're going to get in there because they are a little bit different. Well, something else that's a little bit different is if you're using some kind of container like this, right? So if you're, you, if you're using little square containers for glitter or beads, those little one inch square containers, you're obviously going to get more in there than you are 14 glitter glue bottles, right? So I'm going to go through each of my products. I'm going to add them to my, um, my color chart. They're going to have a number. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take all these bottles and I'm going to put them in whatever container I'm using and number them, right? They've all got a number. Now, they're all going to have 1 through 14, and as I go through and add to the green and the Tim Holtz, it's going to be number 1, and I'm going to take the orange bottle and add to orange and the Tim Holtz again, and that's going to become number 2. So I can catalog all of these and then put that away, right? The other nice thing about something like this is that it is open. So if I want to work with something, let's say I want to work with Adirondack inks, I've got the three colors that I want here. I can just come over to, oops, I didn't put my box back. I don't have to get into a container. Right here, here I'm, I'm going to go preaching again. If you can keep your workspace in like this seven to nine foot square around you, you can put your hands on anything, whether it's, you know, glitter glue or uh, your scissor drawer, right? Everything's at your fingertips. You're going to be able to not only get more done, it's going to be more fun, less frustrating and all that stuff, but you're going to use more of your products. So if you can put things in something small like this that you can bring to your workstation, work with, and then put it right back, it's going to make it a lot easier. Some of you um, have taken class before, and before I had the stash and store boxes, I just used these little open baskets on a shelf, and it was the same concept, right? I could grab that basket of inks or chalks or red, if I'm a god a little, and bring it right to my workspace space, use what I need, and then put it all back, put it all away. So as you're going through your uh, organizing your coloring agents, you want to keep that in mind as you're choosing storage. Can I bring it to my workspace? Is it easy to get into? Do I have to open something, open something else? The least opening you can do, the more likely that you're going to use those products. The other thing is when you get new products, it's even easier to put those things away. So keep all that in mind as you're deciding. Okay, so your challenge for this week is to get all this done, right? You need to set yourself up, which is kind of what I've got going on here, because like I said, I'm going to do this next video this afternoon as well. 
But get everything ready. You're going to need your some blank paper for creating your catalog if you're a got a lot. If you have um, paints, right? Um, you're going to need a paintbrush or two and a glass of water, some blotting cloths. Um, I have a lot of inks that I'm going to catalog, so I chose a stamp um, that has a lot of surface area. So I'm going to get a good color. Let's look at that, actually. What is that? I think there's a blue. Here it is. Right? So if you're going... Now, you can just take your ink, I guess, and blot it down, right? But you can see you really don't get a good impression of what that color looks like there. So now I just use that small stamp. It doesn't, I'm going to get ink all over myself. It doesn't, um, it shows that the color shows much better, right? It's a pretty dense design stamp. So keep that in mind as you're choosing what you, um, you know, if you're just going to. Okay, so here's what else I've got. Stamp cleaner and a little uh, paper towel to clean that off, or you might use baby wipes or whatever you've got. But set yourself up for success. Make sure you have all the tools you need so that you can just keep working rather than thinking, oh, I'll do my paints later or I'll do, you know, inks later. If you just kind of set yourself up so you've got everything, you're, you're good to go on that. So, but then, so you can see all the different things for that. Now, if I was also this, so this is Tim Holtz. At the same time, I would have my blue, um, blue pages going so I could do things on both sides with that. I'm going to have these numbered and I'm going to have some storage device ready for them. So different uh, types of, whether it's a drawer, sorry I'm throwing things around here, right? One of the problems with ink pads, and I'm sorry to say that I don't have a perfect solution for it right now, is that you have to stack them up. And any time you're stacking, right, so this drawer's already loaded up, any time you're stacking, you have to dig to the bottom. Well, once your inks are numbered, it makes it a lot easier at least to choose the right stack. So these inks, these powder puff inks, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, labeled on the front, uh, this is drawer number nine, so on my catalog, they're going to say D9, and I know that they're in order. So at least it's easier for me to know which pile to dig in. Um, but there is not a great solution for stamp pads that I found that also uh, uses space efficiently, right? There are some cool stamp pad holders out there where you have a little different pocket for every stamp pad. And if you're using one of those, you can, use, you can either number each section or, um, you know, just put numbers down the side and across the top, and it'll be easy to find rather than numbering each section. The same thing, when you slip an uh, ink pad into that big grid of ink pads, you still have to search through it, right? But if you give it a number um, and give your ink pad, give each square a number and your ink pad a number, then you're going to be able to get right to that color that you want by using a catalog. So especially if you're somebody who's got a lot, and something like inks, right, the colors... I mean, these colors are just really similar. So working with an ink pad, with a catalog for color, is going to make sure you're going to choose the right color the first time because you know what that color looks like, right? So, and you can see I've also got here, so I've also got chalks um, here. The same thing, they're, they're numbered as well. So when I'm going in, um, these numbers start with 1 and build and so these are we're up to 100 here for these colors but all of these are represented in that color catalog as well i know exactly where to go to find that particular color so make it easy on yourself with the tools that you choose the storage tools that you choose so that it's visible and accessible as best as it can be um, and know that i'm really frustrated with ink pads so that's something that's right at the top of my list for problem solving with on on that and if you notice, those ink pads were sticking up a little bit above the drawer. There was quite a bit of space, obviously, for, for anything. The so bottles stick up above the drawer, too. So one of the reasons this product is designed the way that it is 
is so that you can actually see your colors and see your products. Sometimes we don't know what color we want to use, right? And at that point, you can pull that out and you can see all the different things that you've got um, if you're just sort of looking for inspiration or motivation as well. Oh, I don't want to put that back because I haven't actually cataloged any of those things. Now, one of the nice things about this drawer system, too, in particular, is that the inserts that go into it are perforated. So there's five sections in there. If you're using this tool and you haven't noticed that, let me pull my inks and chalks out again, it comes with, well this only has three, but it's going to come with five dividers in it. I just tore off three of them and separated this out the way that it was going to work best for me. So one of the nice things about those dividers is that because they're perforated, you can just tear off what you want or what you don't want. And these two are not attached together, right? I just left the feet at the bottom. I'll show you. I'll tear one off right now. So I just left the feet at the bottom to, ho to hold that in place um, and then just moved those dividers around. Now, these aren't even glued in place. You, you could glue it down to the bottom of your um, drawer if you needed to. But once you load it up, the dividers are going to stay in place and keep everything from sliding around. So if you hadn't noticed that about your stash and store boxes, woo, it's a very cool little feature and it works great. All right, so we're going to create these color catalogs now. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen as you create your color catalog is that you're going to find things that don't work, right? Dried up inks, dried up pens. Um, get rid of those things. For some weird reason, we tend to keep stuff like that. Maybe we set it aside, whatever. It's hard to make a decision. But if you've got a dried up ink pen that's not refillable, it's time to throw it away. Or a stamp pad that's not re-inkable, you need to throw that away. So get your mind around that um, first. Or something that's really gummed up or gross or that you're not going to use, right? It's just like everything else. And for some reason, when you look at that color thing and think, well, I'm never going to use this, then out it goes into your purge box it goes right keep that in mind so you're going to get your products together this week this is the first part of the challenge you're going to decide on what kind of storage tool you're going to use how you're going to put those things away right whether you're using these little trays or whether you're using baskets or again i just want to encourage you whatever you choose i'm looking around to see if i have one of my old baskets around i don't but there's some pictures in the in the PowerPoint, so I'll make sure that those stay in there. Um, and you can look at them online. Whatever you choose, you want to keep it open, right? You want to avoid closing things and closing things and stacking things if you can at all do that, right? Keep it as open as possible. So you're going to gather your things together. I hear, I thought I heard movement there. Oh no, someone's going out the door. I was waiting for Karen in case she had questions. So for, first thing you're going to do, decide on your storage tool. What kind of storage tools are you going to use? Uh, the second thing you're going to do is gather all of those coloring agents together. Um, get your supplies ready so you need paper, whatever you're working with. Are you going to do some painting? Are you going to do some stamping? Whatever it is, you might want to have a little blow dryer handy so that if you have something that takes a long time to dry, you can sort of move that along as well. Um, you're going to create your catalog sheets by color and put the number of the product on there. And you're going to create your catalog sheets by designer also. Now, some people are going to have um, big catalog sheets. Some people are going to use little 8.5 by 11 or 4 by 6 cards um, and to make those catalogs if you're not a god a lot. If you're not a god a lot, if you're god a little, you're going to use drawers or clamshells or something and group things by color. If you're a god a lot, you're going to keep things together by kind of by size of product, right? So this all happens to be... Um, find something else I'm going to put in there. This all happens to be paint. This also fits in there. I'm just going to continue the numbering um, sequence through this. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I've got ten in here. These are drawer, drawer seven, D7. So when I spray this Tattered Angels, this is gold, on my metallic page, um, I'm just going to label it D7, which is drawer 7, and whatever number I give this bottle, right? Now, the numbering of the bottle is the next, is the next level of OCD-ness, okay? So if you don't want to number everything, if you just want to put it in the drawer, 
you could probably tell if you put drawer seven and you were looking for yellow paint that that's the yellow paint, right? But if you have colors that are very similar, so let's say these little ink guys are going in a drawer and I'm, and I'm not choosing to put a number on them and I just said these were drawer seven, when I got there I wouldn't know if this was which one of these was the right color without kind of testing it out, right? So that's when numbering each individual product becomes um, beneficial. So on, in this situation, very obvious that it's yellow, but if you're somebody who lo has lots of colors, then it's not gonna be as obvious. And what you're trying to do is make it as fast and easy to find what you want and fast and easy to put it away as well. I really feel like I'm lecturing today. Do I sound like I'm lecturing today, Sue? I feel like I am. All right. So you're going to create your color catalogs, your manufacturer and or designer catalogs. So you might have your uh, Tim Holtz catalog, but you're also going to have stickles or uh, quick quotes or whatever products you like to use a lot of. You're going to sort your um, coloring agents into your storage containers and put them away. And again, try to keep it as open and easy to get to as you can. Um, your goal this week is to sort three types of coloring agents. So you might do paints and sprays and pens. Uh, I fear that pens is going to be a big one for a lot of people, right? So you need to get through three containers of coloring agents that you've got now. One of the things I didn't talk about also was, uh, you know, pen storage. So this is another one of our stamp and supply suitcases. Um, and this is just loaded with, this is a brand called Spectrum Noir um, pens. And so storing pens is challenging because you want to keep them flat, right? That's kind of our goal. So again, not a great, I don't have a great solution for that um, now other than something like this that you can open up and have it on your workspace. With that said, you may have... Um, I'm not going to tell you why I do this, but, well, yes, I will. You may have, oh, here comes Karen with the question of the day. You may want to store your things flat like this in, in some kind of container, and then when it comes to using them, keep something else open on your desk, right? So I might have all these stored flat, but if I had just a big open box on my desk that I could drop them into while I was working with them so they're easy to pull in and out, then that's a great solution to having them stored flat, but being able to bring them out and use them quickly and easily. And then again, you can see I just dumped them all back in there, um, kind of, and now they're all flat again, and I can stack them up. I'm not a big fan of the stacking, but some sometimes we end up we end up with the stacking, right? Okay, so uh, we have just one question Karen brought up today from Trisha. If you are a god a little, do you not? do the catalog and just put all the reds in one drawer, oranges, etc. If you're a god a little, here's the advantage to doing the catalog. You can really see what kind of colors you've got, right? What do they look like? So if you are got a little and you're doing something like this, so there is an advantage to it, right? There's not as much challenge, right? So let's go back to this, these greens. If you're a god a little, you're not probably not going to, oh, I'm throwing them on the floor. I've got all these little different green inks, right? Um, and it's hard to tell what color they are. If you're a god a little and you've only got, let's pull out my red here, it's very obvious red, red, light pink, and dark pink, right? I'm, it's, there's not a lot of challenge there between what's light and what's dark and, and how it's going to look, right? Very different. But the catalog is beneficial, and here it is. So here's these, those three particular colors of red already cataloged. So you can actually do this catalog and keep it in your scrap rack, or do two and keep it in your scrap rack, or you can take this little card and put it right into your color box and then have everything noted on the card so it's all in one place, right? If you know you're going for red. So there's a little bit more flexibility there if you're a god a little. Do you, can you make a catalog and put it in your scrap rack or in your storage, your four section system? Absolutely. Can you store that catalog right with in the box or in the drawer? You can do that too. And so honestly, before in previous uh, episodes, 
I used those baskets and I clipped the cards the way the baskets were on the shelf. I clipped the card to the front of the basket so it would be, well in this case it would cover the drawer below, but the way they were sitting on my shelf, I just used a um, binder clip and clipped the card to the front of the basket and then as I looked at the shelf, there was red, I could see all the different red things that I had in there. It was very visible and I knew that what I needed was in that box. Uh, whether it was glitter glue or pearls or whatever, I could see because it was clipped on the front. So that's an advantage to being a got a little is that you have less stuff so it's easier to make it more visual. Um, I would definitely recommend though if you if doing some, I would recommend doing a catalog. It's not nearly as important as it got a little um, as it is as it got a lot when you literally have to look through or think about, you know, multiple piles, drawers, boxes, bins, totes of coloring agents. I hope that answers your question. Okay, so I keep like going through this week's challenge and then I get a little bit sidetracked and get off on something else. So I'm going to follow my guides here. So step one, decide on what storage tool that you're going to use. Clamshells, baskets, drawers, whatever it is. Step two, gather everything together that you're going to catalog. Make sure that you set yourself up for success with ink or water or paintbrushes or whatever you need. Um, you're going to create catalog sheets by color. You're going to now. Here's the other question that I get regularly. I can't believe I wasn't asked it this time. What do you do with your catalog? You may, as a got a lot, especially create want to create two just color sheets. So I'm going to put a color catalog in my big catalog, which I haven't done before but I'm going to do it this time. But I'm going to create two color sheets. So in the front of my blue section in my scrap rack, I'll have a blue color sheet. And in my rain, but in my big catalog, I'll also have the color sheets there, right? So it's kind of a lot of work, but I think it'll be really cool if I'm looking through my catalog sheets and I'm, then I can choose a color. Or if I'm looking for something blue, I might have totally forgotten that I had blue glitter glue. Well, I'm not going to take this jumbo bottle, I don't even know where it is now, a blue glitter glue and put it in my scrap rack, right? But if I had it on that blue sheet as I was flipping through blue, it's going to pop up for me and I'm going to remember that I have it. And that's really kind of the key right through this whole thing is remembering what you've got. So if you're super motivated, do two blue sheets as you're working. Put one in your catalog, your general catalog section, and put one right into your rainbow section of your scrap rack or in your box or whatever, depending on how you're organizing. Now, one of the things that I haven't talked about yet, see here I am, I'm trying to do the challenge and I just go back, is this idea of back stock, right? So some things like glitter that come in big bulky containers like this, you don't need to have this at your fingertips because this is enough glitter to glitter your entire home, right? If it's Christmas time, you could just get a can of spray glue, spray the outside of your house, and throw this at it in handfuls. You cover your whole house with this much glitter. I'm just kidding. But you, if you have a little Ziploc baggie of green glitter, a little two by two Ziploc bag full of green glitter in your scrap rack or in your, you know, green box or how, whatever tool you're using, that's enough glitter to get you through whatever project you're doing. But then you still have this whole big container of glue, of glitter. What are you going to do with it? So we talked before about creating a backstock program. And usually backstock is only for rainbow. Very rarely do you buy 10,000 beach brads that you need to have a beach backstock, right? But so for things like this, but you might get 10,000 green brads. You might get you know, a hundred of little green pebbles or whatever. So if you have back stock of things by color, if you just take something simple, cardboard box, label it green back stock, you throw those a uh, hundred green pebbles, you throw your green glitter, you throw the thousand extra green brads in, anything you've got that gr that's green is in that back stock area. When you go to your green section and you know, say, hey, I'm out of green glitter, you can grab your green box, bring it over, refill your glitter bag, and in that same moment, you can check the green brads and the green pebbles or the green bling or whatever you've got. Bling is a big offender, right? You can get bling in these Ziploc, in these bags that are like huge. You don't need all of those with you, but at, 
if since you have your green out, you can refill anything that's green or red or et cetera. So creating a little back stock area is a great way to store big things like this that you don't need in your nine foot square here, right? Because you already have a sample of that green glitter. Right here in your scrap rack or in your thing that you're gonna use, right? That is enough glitter, like I said, to do any kind of project that I'm gonna do with glitter. So that's not a two by two bag. I do have the two by two bags here though. So even that's a lot of glitter, right? But if this had green brads in it and green glitter, I could just go to green and go, oh, look, I've used up all those, or flowers. Sometimes you get 100 green flowers, right? You don't need all those at the same time. So it gives you a place to sort of restock from. I'm gonna set that up. You're gonna see it on my shelf in the next video. A little picture, a little back stock area. All right, so gather your coloring agents, create your color catalog, create your designer catalog, Maybe you're create two color catalogs. You're gonna do your manufacturer sheets if you're a Stickles addict or Sukaneko addict. You're gonna sort three containers of coloring agents. And again, I don't care what you consider a container. This is a container. Uh, this is a container. You might have a great big box of paints. You're gonna call that a container. Size doesn't matter, just three containers. Post your progress. Tell us about your reward. That was so much fun to hear about the banana split today. So post your progress either on Facebook or send us an email. Tell us what your reward is, what you're enjoying if you've actually finished your um, challenge. And that's it. That's all she wrote. Now I want to share something else with you though. Oh, I love having a captive audience. This is number seven. So next week, number eight, that's our last challenge and it's called going to a crop or class or preparing for a crop or class, right? Where hopefully we're gonna take all the things that we've been working on over the last eight weeks and see how much simpler it is to prepare ourselves for an event, whether that event is taking place in your own dining room or you're going somewhere. But here's the fun thing. I know not everybody, not all of you live in this greater Seattle Tacoma area, but we have the, on November 8th, is the uh, Seattle Scrapbook Show. And it's actually in Bellevue, but it's a CK event. And we are going, Sue, Karen, Deanna, me, and Tisa, my sister. We are so excited because we're not working at the show, which we normally do. We're gonna go and shop and then we're gonna crop. But the cool thing is for me is that next week when we're going, talking about going to a crop or a class, um, I'm gonna pack for that show right here in front of you. So I have to put my thinking cap on about what I want to work um, on the sh at the show, what I'm going to need to take with me. And then I'm actually going to pack my crop tote. So I will be, what is next week? It's only going to, it's like the second, right? Um, I will be ready to go on the 8th, a week before. I won't even have to think about it because of the class. I'll have be all set up and ready to go. So, um, so I'm looking forward to having you on board with me next week. For those of you who are in the Seattle area, I hope I see you. Come by, we, did, we do have a table at the crop, all of us uh, scrap rack girls. Um, so please pop by and introduce yourself if I haven't met you already. I know a lot of you locals I know just from shows or whatever, but we would love to say hi um, to everybody at the show too. So I guess that's it, blah, blah, blah. Thanks so much for joining me this week and I look forward to talking with you next week um, when we get ready for that crop or class. Have a great one.